How's it going everyone? I'm Sean and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about fretboard radius or radii if you're gonna be really, really fancy and have multiple. This is another one of those really overlooked aspects of guitar building that everyone just kind of goes, oh, what radius should I put on it? Uh, don't know. <laughs> And uh, it's one thing that does make a big difference to playability, similar to frets as well. That's the other one. I made another video on fret material and sizes. Go check that one out if you haven't already. This one is about radius. So grab yourself a nice hot cup of tea, coffee, beer, whatever you want. Don't get hot beer. That's probably a bad idea. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Mulled wine, mulled cider, mulled beer. <laughs> get comfortable and enjoy. First of all, before getting really stuck into it, I guess it's important to talk about what is a fretboard radius. So if you haven't noticed already, most guitars, I'm gonna say most, 99% of electric and acoustic guitars have a radius applied to their fretboard. The fretboard is not flat. Classical guitars are different. Classical guitars will generally have a flat fretboard, but electrics and acoustics, they've got a radius applied to them. The radius is the measure of the arc of the fretboard across its width. So if you were to draw a large circle at say 12 inch radius, 24 inch diameter, two foot diameter, about that much, and take just the fretboard, stick it up and you take that little outside edge, that is the radius that we're gonna be talking about. So when we're talking about lower numbers of a radius, that circle is tighter, therefore the radius is tighter, and bigger numbers then, bigger circle, flatter radius. Just to get that out of the way, that is what we're talking about here. Building upon that, if you imagine the neck of a guitar, which is long, and you have the radius across the fretboard the entire way down, it's like a cylinder. So if you were to put a neck inside a pipe, for example, which is a cylinder, the, if you get the correct size of pipe, then the fretboard will basically sit on the inside of that pipe. It's a bit of a funny way to think about it, but that is the way I think about it, it's a cylinder. That is what we would call a consistent radius or one radius or a radius fretboard, I guess. Because what you can also have is a compound radius. This is where the instantaneous radius at any point on a neck is different. It is a variable radius. So usually it would be tighter at the knot and flatter at the heel end of the neck. This you can imagine is more like a cone where it's tighter up here and as it goes the diameter of that pipe, imaginary pipe that we're putting our neck into, it's a very convoluted way of thinking of it, but the di diameter of that pipe is expanding and getting larger as you go down towards the body of the guitar. There are advantages to this which I'll go through a bit later. A couple common Compound radii, radius. I never know is that a compound radius or a compound radii neck. Let me know in the comments down below. Which, which do you say? I say, I say compound radius that has multiple radii. <sighs> right. Anyway, a couple of compound ones would be the likes of 9.5 to 14 inch radius, 7.25 to 12 inch radius, which is a bit of a weird one, and 12 to 16 inch radius. Personally, I like a 9.5 to 14. That's a really cool, really interesting fretboard radius to me. Now, the big question, why bother? Why is your fretboard radius? Why is it not just flat? The easy answer is playability. With a radius on the fretboard, it more easily conforms to your hand and what it, what it naturally wants to do. Most people, when you close your hand, it doesn't close in a square, it closes in a, a, a circle of some description. Your, your hand articulates kind of circularly in a radius, effectively, which means that when you're holding the guitar neck, if it's got a radius on the fretboard, it will more naturally match what the human hand does. And that's good, that's, that's always good. In general, a tighter radius will make chords easier. That's pretty much what it comes down to. 
um, your, if you go too tight on a radius, you, when you bend the string, it can choke out because you're bending the, the string around a radius more. And, and it can just, yeah, can just choke out. A shallower radius, so with a larger number, is easier to solo and easier to bend. It's just a little bit more articulate, I guess, would be the way. This comes back to the compound radius and why you might want it. If you've got a tighter radius around the nut, where you generally do a lot more chording, that's nice. And as you get up past the 12th fret, it becomes more, well, as you go up towards the 12th fret and beyond, it gets flatter, which is easier for soloing. Generally, we don't do an awful lot of chords up around the 12th fret, and not often do we do a lot of soloing down around the 1st and 2nd frets. So a compound radius in that sense makes a lot of sense. It can potentially be a lot of work to put it into a fretboard if you're a builder. Uh, definitely it's a lot more work than just a straight radius. Also, this comes down a bit to personal preference of the player. Some people like a compound, some people don't. Some people like a straight radius, some people don't. Personal preference. <laughs> it's always what it comes down to. One thing to keep in mind is generally you will want to match the bridge to the radius of the strings, which conform to the radius of the fretboard. So they all kind of want to balance up. If you've got a straight radius, let's think of a Les Paul, for example. Generally, they've got a 12-inch radius. A tunematic bridge, which is actually a fixed radius, generally is fixed to a 12-inch radius. If you have a Les Paul or a tunematic style bridge, pull it out, have a look at it. The radius of the bridge should be about 12 inches. The radius of the fretboard be 12 inches. What that will do is it will give you your strings should be a lot more evenly spaced from the fretboard at all points. If you were to put a 12 inch radius bridge, for example, on let's say a, a neck with 7.25 inch radius uniformly along it, which means the radius of the neck is tighter than the bridge, that will mean that your strings will be slightly more shallow of a radius than your neck. This kind of makes sense which basically means your middle strings are gonna be closer to the fretboard than your outer strings. Some people may like this, some people will hate it. Generally, it is accepted that you want them fairly evenly spaced across the radius, across the width of the neck. If you're doing a compound radius fretboard, what I like to do is I like to imagine that the radius is continuing. So again, thinking like our cone, the cone continues past the fretboard, keeps going until it hits the bridge. There is some maths here that you can do to figure out exactly what radius your bridge should be set to to match the compound radius of the fretboard properly. And that will be basically, <laughs> bear with me here, thinking about it kind of algebraically, going back right back to school here, the, <laughs> the difference from the nut radius to the end of the neck radius should be three quarters the difference from the knot to the bridge. So, bear with me. If you've got a fretboard that goes from 12 to 16 inch radius, that means it's 12 at the knot and at your last fret it's at 16. That is a difference of four inches. Doing our maths and plugging that in, imagining your cone, it keeps going up to the bridge. That four inch difference carried onto the bridge Four is going to be three quarters of the total. So going backwards, if you multiply four by one and a third, so we're going to get an extra 1.33, one and a third. That means adding one and a third to four, that's going to give us five and a third over the entirety from nut to bridge, which means our bridge radius should be what we said the nut radius is plus five and a third. We said the compound radius on this was 12 to 16, therefore 12 plus five and a third, which is what we just figured out, it's gonna give you 17 and a third inch radius. If you wanna get that bridge perfect, that's what you should set the radius to on it. This doesn't need to be perfect. You can get it pretty close. So in our example just here, we need what, 17 and a third. Most of the time, any radius gauge set that you get isn't gonna have 17 and a third. And unless you've got some kind of variable radius gauge, you're gonna to have to get as close as you can. It's gonna be either usually an 18 or a 16. 
and it doesn't really matter which one you go for. The difference is going to be negligible. You're not going to notice if you're off by a third of an inch of radius over that loop. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it too much, but just know that you're going to want to, in the event of a compound radius, have a shallower radius at the bridge than you do at the end of the neck. Easy way of thinking of it is just go one, maybe two steps up. There are a couple of very, very common radiuses, radii, radii, that you would use on guitar necks. So starting at the tightest, you would have a seven and a quarter inch radius. This is used mainly on vintage guitars, most often and most notably on vintage Fenders. So if you think of your early Telecasters, your early Jazzmasters and Strats, they'll have really, really round fretboards on them. A lot of people don't like them for that reason, but you know some people are going to like it. This is probably the mo one of the most uncommon fretboard radius choices out there, but it's still a significant one because of those early, predominantly early fenders. Moving on, you've got 9.5 inch radius. This is what is most common on most modern fenders. 7.25 is just too tight. 9.5 retains the feel of a vintage instrument, but with the added benefit of actually being able to bend notes properly. So that's a really common one. If you have a Strat that you really, really love, good chance it's 9.5 inch radius. Next up is a 12 inch radius. This is your middle of the road. This is the best of both worlds. It chords really well, it solos really well. It doesn't excel at either of them, but it does a really good job at finding that balance. Because of that reason, most production made guitars nowadays, definitely the cheaper ones, are going to be this because they want to get the most broad kind of audience, the cast the widest net as possible. 12 inch radius is that one. Most Gibsons, again, most production Gibsons, are going to be this 12 inch radius. It's really, really popular, really, really common. And if you're not sure what kind of radius you want to do, go to 12 inch radius. It is a safe bet. Moving along, 16 inch radius. This is really for people who want to do a lot of soloing, a lot of, you know, single notes, not a huge amount of chording. It's really popular on shredder style guitars or metal guitars. Uh, think of your super strats. They are almost, I don't want to say almost exclusively, but unless they're a compound radius, they are, good chance, it's going to be a 16 inch radius. And lastly, there's flat, you know, no radius. Not common at all in any way, shape or form on electrics or really acoustics either. Uh, but on classical guitars, it's very, very common to have a flat radius. It would be quite strange to have a flat radius electric guitar. I'm sure they exist out there, but yeah, quite strange, quite weird. Uh, it's worth noting though, I think. Personally, I prefer a compound radius. I said earlier, I really like a 9.5 to a 14 or potentially a 9.5 to 12. That's slightly less, but 9.5 to 14. If I'm left to my own devices, that's what I'll put on my guitars. I think it gives you that really nice chordability at the nut. Also, as you get up to the higher registers, you get that nicer soloing. It's a little bit easier, a little bit freer flowing. So that's my two cents if for what that's worth. Uh, if I was going for just a straight radius, I'd probably just go for a 12, perfectly honest. Uh, it's again, balanced and I like balance. Funny enough, that compound, the 9.5 to 14, is a really nice balanced compound radius. Because if you imagine, right in the middle of 9.5 and 14, it's going to be 12. So, that's where I'm coming from. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. If you watched the whole way, then I'm hoping that, hey, that you did actually enjoy it. And, well, I'm glad about that. Head down, leave a comment below. Let me know, hey, do you like a really weird radius? Is there something weird that you just love? And... Let me know down below. Let me know why, because I'm always interested in, well, in learning what people like in terms of guitars. <laughs> hit a like, hit a subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you all again real soon.